We're in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. Ecclesiastes 7, 10. Is it too chilly in here? Okay. I got yeses and noes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 7. This is a message I have never preached, and, and I have been wanting to preach this for a few years here. And it's just, we're going to look at one verse in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7, verse 10. Everybody got that? Ecclesiastes, it's, it's like kind of right after Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, so it's kind of right there. And he says this, and, and I don't have time to go into all the different things about Ecclesiastes, but I will say this. Solomon had a lot of wisdom. And when you have a lot of wisdom and not a lot of obedience, you will lose your wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Because Ecclesiastes is anointed by the Holy Spirit, but it, it is this. It is a book that shows what happens when you have wisdom and you don't have self-control and obedience. And Solomon had no self-control or obedience. How many wives? Too many. Wives and concubines, a thousand? No self-control. A thousand? I mean, ten maybe, you know, but <laughs> a thousand? And he says this in Ecclesiastes, anything that my eyes saw, I gave myself. Is that wisdom? Not hardly. Not hardly. And so keep that in mind when you read Ecclesiastes, because sometimes I get questions about it, and, and that you kind of have to keep that in mind, the purpose of the book. And so, but not that he doesn't say some good things in here. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10, now he's, he's writing this when he's older, and he says, do not say, why is it that the former days were better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask about this. The, um, the message, which I, I look to occasionally because it's kind of a, an application, it says this, don't always be asking, where are the good old days? I, I, I have people mention this from time to time. Oh, you know, the good old days, you know. <laughs> right? And the older you get, the more temptation there is to live in the past. So that's what he's talking about. He's talking about living in the past. Boy, I remember the good old days. I remember when I was a kid, we had a car that went 100,000 miles, and my uncle was a mechanic. He couldn't believe it. He'd never seen a car that went 100,000 miles. You remember those good old days? Buy a car and 20,000 miles later, you're rebuilding the engine. Boy, those are the good old days. I kind of like a car nowadays that goes 300,000 miles and you barely have to change the oil. Really? We drive the snot out of them now. We used to baby them then and we rebuilt them all the time. So, you know, the, the point is, you know, <laughs> the, the good old days were yesterday. And this is today. This is today. And we're not, we're not living in yesterday, we're living in today. And so uh, Solomon, who is at this point older, uh, says, again, the message says this, don't always be asking, where are the good old days? Wise folks don't ask questions like that. <laughs> I like that. Wise folks don't ask questions like, where are the good old days? Or where is this? Or where is that? You know, Everything that happened yesterday has already happened. No change in it. Can't do a thing about it. Can't live in regret. Over, Boy, I wish I would have done this, or I wish I would have done that. The truth is, every one of us, if we knew what we know now and went back to do things different, would probably do a little bit better. Amen. Maybe not, but you know. I, I've always, you know, uh, I, I've always heard people say wisdom comes with age. Not necessarily. I know dumb old people, too. 
you know, I mean, something doesn't, oh, I'm, I'm 50, so I magically have wisdom. No. No, that doesn't necessarily mean a thing. And, and so God wants us to take care of things today. Today, not tomorrow and not yesterday. And now we're talking about the purpose of the church. What's the purpose of the church? To do something today. Not to do something yesterday. Or not to say, boy, you know, I remember when the church this or the church that. It was yesterday. Amen. You know, one, one thing, that in, in, um, and we'll get into, we should be remembering some things. First of all, remember where you came from. Always remember where you came from. You know, you, you get this idea that, you know, boy, when I was out in the world, everything was so great. And it, was it? No. no. And, and, and I remember uh, after I got saved out of drugs, one of the things that you see is people say, you know, it wasn't that bad. Every once in a while I go, I'll see someone in jail. Oh, yeah, when I get out. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And, and, and all, you know, our, sometimes our mind only remembers the good things that happened and not the bad things. And so, but there's always a danger of living in the past. Glorying, and, and you know, when um, we had a missionary here a couple months ago, Terry Bell. You remember that? We were talking in the office for service, and he, or it was after service, and he said, people get caught in an era of their life that they really liked, an era. Do you know some people never get out of high school? It was an era of their life. Some people had a job that was like for maybe this 10 or 15, 20, 30 years, and, and they glory in that era, and they never get out. Some people went to a church, and they glory in that, and, and, and they, they want to go... They're in search of that church. <laughs> They're not going to find it. You know, if you go back to that church, you're still not going to find it because it's changed. Because you're looking for something that doesn't exist. Yesterday does not exist today. Yesterday exists yesterday. We had the photo album last night. We were looking at that. And, you know, the, the kids were all little and they were playing and stuff like that. That's great. But they're grown. They will never be little kids again and will never be parents again and will never have to change poopy diapers again. Thank God. <laughs> Not everything back then was good. And, and so don't get caught in an era and stay there because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Don't get caught in the glory years. The glory years are gone. And the devil will use that to keep you living in the past so that you can't affect the present. Amen? I've seen people leave churches. I did this when I left Detroit. I, we, you know, I got saved and I went to this church. We were in, I was in Teen Challenge. We actually uh, had to go to that church. But I liked it. I mean, I really liked it. And, and when, I went to, when I went to Bible school, I went to a church there for about five years. And, you know, I never enjoyed it. Because it wasn't my church. It wasn't that church. Because I was still looking for that church. And, and you know what happened? After, uh, after Susan and I got married, they actually built another church and they moved. And I knew they were doing that. And uh, I went up there and I went into the church. I walked in. You know what happened? It changed. I couldn't go back to the old thing because the old thing wasn't there. And I, I walked away very discouraged because I, I was on a journey. I, I, Michael knows this. I, I call it the quest for the church. You know, sometimes you have a quest for a church that used to go. You're, you're on a journey, and you're trying to find that utopia that doesn't exist. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I'm really trying to safeguard against, and, and and this, I think this is important for pastors to do. Don't make the people follow you. Make people follow the Lord. So that when you leave, they don't go on a journey looking for you. Because you won't find it. 
You know, if, if, there's, if there's pastors or churches that you've had in your past, thank God for it and move on. Move on. It's time to move on because today is a day of salvation. Tula Rosa needs the church today. Amen. They don't need the church yesterday. They need the church today. Amen. And so we have to live in today. Amen. Can't live in the past. And so what does he say here? It's not wise to ask. Where are the good old days? You know where the good old days are? There was a song about this. These are the good old days. That, that was a song, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, 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 that's it, yeah. I, I knew, it. the cobwebs got cleared out there for a minute. It was an old uh, hippie song, so. <clears throat> um, but, but today is a day God wants to do something, and, and so... Um, you know, it, it is, and, and as, as we pray, even as, if you pray for a move of the Holy Spirit, we're not praying for a move of the Holy Spirit tomorrow, praying for it today. Thank God for everything he did. Just, I mean, truly be thankful for everything that he's done up to this point, but he's not done moving. God is still moving, and God is a God of today. He, he, he says this, and, and I love this. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know the story? In, 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 uh, it goes on to say, he's not a God of the dead, but he's a God of the living. And there's a principle there, more than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a principle. God is a God of what is going on right now. He is a God of what's going on right now today. And so we can't live in the past or we'll miss what he's, going, what he's doing today. You know, you know what happened? My kids, um, we had four kids living at home. And in the space of just a few months, four of them were like, Whoosh. so we went from, you know, having kids around all the time to having like nobody. And, and uh, we just, we were just all messed up. <laughs> we, uh, we drove home from, yeah, <laughs> I heard that, Jewel. We, we, um, we were driving home from Bible school, and the kids, what, one of the things is, and, and, you know, they didn't like pork, and so on the way home, I said, you know what, let's buy some pork chops and grill them. <laughs> and so we ate the pork chops, and we got over them being gone, because they didn't like pork chops. But one of the things, what I was going to say was, I'd go to Bible school and visit them. And, you know, I, I enjoyed doing that, but, you know, I missed the real blessing of it because I so missed them not being at home. And I look back at that and I think, you know, that could have really been a lot more fun <laughs> if I just would have enjoyed it a little bit more. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Now that they're gone, you don't want them back. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, we have a guest bed that's not very comfortable, and that's so that... <laughs> no, it's not so they don't come, it's so they don't stay. No, all jokes aside, we'd love to have them, but just not really. But, <clears throat> but we, we can miss things that are going on right now by either glorying in the past or thinking. Today, it, we're today. We're not yesterday. We're, we're, not, we're not in whatever happened yesterday, and thank God for it. Another thing, too, is a lot of the things we glory in had a whole lot to do with us and not a lot to do with God. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I look back at certain jobs I had or certain things I did, and that, that was great. It has nothing to do with God or glorifying God. It's just we just live in the past. And so God wants us to be doing something today. Now, what's the purpose of the church? to live for today, to do something today. And so uh, don't get stuck in an era or a rut. <clears throat> we need to keep moving on. In Hebrews, it says this. Turn with me to Hebrews, if you would. There are two books in the New Testament that I think really, really apply to what is going on in the United States today. And one is Hebrews. You know what Hebrews talks about? People that live in the past. People that say, you know, back then, we're not back then. It's over. It's done. The other thing, another book that, that speaks to the, the church in the United States today is a book of 1 Corinthians. 
And this is, this is why. Because they were a self-centered, self-righteous, self-indulging people. And we are too. And so I think those two books really expressly speak to us. Let's look what Hebrews has to say in chapter 3. This is what happens when we live in the past. Hebrews chapter 3. This is, this is a group of people that really did things for God yesterday. This is basically what they did. And so I forget how many times he uses the word today, but he uses the word today all the time in there. And, and trying to get them to get out of what they're doing, you know what happens when we live in yesterday or we, we're not really seeking what's going on today? We become dead and cold. We become dead in our spirit. You, you know, before I had surgery, I went through my whole backyard. I had the grass cut, edged, weeded. Every single planter did not have a weed in it. Not one weed in the whole yard. Except in the yard, you know. I mean, in the planters, there was no weeds in there. You know, a couple weeks later, I went back there, and there was a bunch of weeds in them planters. And I thought, the nerve of them weeds. You know why that is? Because I cleared it out yesterday. But it's not yesterday anymore. I want to ask you, you got weeds growing in your life? Did you used to be involved in ministry yesterday? Did you used to attend church a lot yesterday? Did you used to read the word and teach and, and get in there yesterday? It's not yesterday. It's today. And if you're still breathing, God has something for you. Amen. And it's not yesterday. Don't live out the rest of your life being, being miserable. Get involved in what God is doing today. Amen. Because God is doing things today. God is doing things today. And so <clears throat> in Hebrews chapter 3, I'm going to read through this real quick. Verse 12. It says, take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. You know what he's talking about here? An evil, unbelieving heart? Not talking about drug addicts and alcoholics. Talking about people living in the past. If you're living in the past, you have an evil, unbelieving heart. Don't get quiet. No, I'm not done yet. And if you're dead, we'll call the ambulance back. Verse 13, but encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called, what? Today. today. So that none of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of riches. <clears throat> Let me shut that off, please. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. While it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. For who provoked him? When they had heard, indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they should not enter his rest, but to those who were living in the past? Isn't that right? What did they keep saying? Boy, we sure had it good in Egypt. They were slaves. They kept saying how good they had it in Egypt. They were slaves. You see how we do that? Boy, yesterday was so good. We just had it so good. They were slaves. <laughs> they were making bricks. Hey, here's what I want you to do the rest of your life. Go make bricks. And if you don't make enough, I'm going to beat you because that's what happened to them. They were slaves and they were glorying in the past. And he says here in, in uh, verse 19, and so we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Now, what is unbelief? It's living in the past. That's what he's talking about there. Now, unbelief is a lot of different things, but living in the past is specifically what he's talking about there. And so what is the danger of being hardened in our heart? You know, God has things for us today. I, I had somebody in our church in California, went to, uh, they were going to marital counseling. And, and, uh, and, and he said to the counselor when they walked in, the counselor said, what do you think is your problem? He says, well... You know, I, I, I don't think I'm living according to the word. And this guy was a Christian. He said, I don't think I'm living according to the word. And, and he said, I think there's things I'm doing wrong. And, and, and the counselor said to him this. This is, how this, this is how it opened. 
And the counselor said, have you read the word in the past? And he said, yeah. And he said, that's not your problem. Let me tell you, if you read the word in the past, it's in the past. We're real forgetful, you know. We're just not that sharp. I wish I was as smart as I thought I was half the time. I'd, I'd, I'd be a genius. We're just not that smart. So why do we have to continually read the word? Because we forget. Are you reading the word daily today? Today. Amen. Not talking about, well, I've read, I've read through the Bible a lot. I'm, today. We're in a today relationship. And God wants to meet us today. God wants to meet us today. Amen? God wants to meet us today. And so, um, let's look also at, at Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 32. I like this. Chapter 10, verse 32. I want, let me tell you this. Do you know how many times God called Peter from fishing? that we have recorded? Five. He couldn't get them to stop fishing. <laughs> he kept going back to the glory years. Kept going back. So finally, Jesus dies on the cross. Peter denies him three times. He gets all that cleared away, and Jesus appears to him a few times. And, and then you know what Peter says? He's having a little group. He's having a little Bible study with the disciples. You know what he says to him? Let's go fishing. It's like, did I miss something here? I'm going fishing. You know, you know what happened? All the other disciples went with them. Let's all go fishing. You know, did Jesus just die and rise again from the dead and give them a mission to do? And what are they doing? Going right back to the old life. Going right back to the glory years. Oh, man, I was a good fisherman. How many times did Peter not catch fish? That time, too. It's in chapter 21. How many fish did he catch that night? Bzz. After Jesus came, how many fish did he catch? 153. And he couldn't get Peter, Peter to get out of that mindset of yesterday. The glory years. The glory years are yesterday. You know what? If you had a great life, thank God for it. Seriously. Thank God for everything that he's done yesterday. But don't let it bog you down on what you're doing today. Because God wants us in the Word today. We have younger people here. We have middle-aged. We have older. If you're older, middle-aged, or younger, it doesn't matter. Don't live in the glory years. Get out of it. Those, are, those days are over. Remember this. It's not where you're at that's important. It's where you're headed. Where are you headed? With God, I mean. Where are you headed with God? God has things for us today. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Kind of identify some things here. He says, but remember the former days. You see what he says? <laughs> I didn't read this in the message. Remember the glory years, the former days, when after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of suffering, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and tribulations, and partly by becoming sharers with those who, so, who were so treated. For you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted joyfully. I, I, Let's skip down to verse 39. It, it basically says what they were doing in, in the life they lived. Verse 39 says this, But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but we are of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. You know what the preserving, what do you know he's talking about, the preserving of the soul? You know, if you let your spirit go, it'll start to rot. If you let your mind go, it'll start to rot. If you don't fill your mind with the word, it starts to rot. If you're not obedient to the word, it starts to rot. What is a preservative? Something that keeps things alive, keeps things fresh. We need our soul preserved so that we don't start to rot. Amen? Because these are the days that great things are going to happen. You know what happened in the last days? All kinds of things happened. You know what else happened in the last days? A great falling away. There's a great falling away. There's a great revival, and there's a great falling away. I want to be in the great revival. I, I don't want to be in the great falling away. I want my eyes fixed on Jesus, 
who is the author and the finisher, he's still writing the book in our lives. Amen? <clears throat> so remember, today is the day of salvation. You know what, the, you know what it, it says here? In, in, it, it says this and refers to it in Hebrews, but it says it in Romans, and it quotes the Old Testament. It says, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. I want to encourage you. Get the word near you, in your mouth, in your heart. It's right there. You know, you know when I, before I got saved, I knew there was a God. I'm being serious here. This isn't a joke. But I just didn't know where he was at. You know, I figured he was in heaven, but I didn't know where heaven was, so I basically had no idea where he was. You know where God is? He's right here. He's here. The word is near us in our mouth and in our heart. It's right here. It's not off in a distance. It's right here. And so God wants us to be living a life of today, not yesterday or tomorrow. I, 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 I've told you before how I, I, I always told the Lord, I'm really going to get to know you someday, and I got to be nearly 50, and I, I said this, and I meant it. If I don't do it now, I'll never do it. I'm lying to myself. That was the fact of the matter. Yeah, one of these days, I'm going to one of the, well, you're not going to live to be forever. Not in this earth. Amen. So I want to encourage you. You know, we're, we're, we're seeing God open doors. You know what Chuck's talking about with the garage sale here? We're, we're going to start a rec center after school between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. There's going to be a rec center where kids can come for free. No charge. It's going to be open every day, not once a year, once a month. It's going to be open every day so that we can win kids to the Lord. Amen? So we can have an impact on the community, get involved in what God's doing. I, I will guarantee it, if you'll pray, God will open up a door for you of ministry. Amen. Well, you know, my, my physical health isn't so good. Well, mine's, <laughs> mine's not either. <laughs> it was at one time, but it, it's, it's, it's falling off quick. But God will give you something to do for ministry. So that your life comes. Do you, do you ever feel like you're in a rut? I mean, seriously. You ever feel like you're in a rut? I do sometimes. You feel like you get in a rut? You get overcome with problems, circumstances? The devil's slick that way, isn't he? Amen. Hey, guys, I'm, I, I'm really, I'm not just preaching here. I, I remember there was, there was a time when uh, you know, I, I, I was doing stuff I, I, in construction, and God was blessing my work in, in, in construction. I mean, really blessing. I mean, really, really blessing. And even after the, the market fell out, and, and, and uh, God still blessed, and, and uh, we didn't go bankrupt, we made money. And, but, you know, God had more for us to do than that. Because you know what all that revolved around? And God has more for us to do than that. I want to encourage as you, as you, some of you are retired. Amen? Take vacations all you want, seriously. But don't gear your life around them. Seriously. Don't gear your life around yourself. Gear your life around what God is doing. I, I, I tell you this, when, and I, when, when your health starts failing, you still can do things for the Lord. Are, are you with me on that? Because we're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> the old gray mirror just ain't what she used to be. <laughs> but God still has stuff for us today. Amen. You know, sometimes I hear people say, well, you know, there was a time when I, I used to teach kids, but my kids are grown now. It's like, uh, what do you mean? Are you done with ministry? That's not how you really feel, is it? You want God to use you, don't you? You want to see what God is doing. You want to be a part of what God is doing. Let's be a part of what God is doing. We're going to stand and we're going to close in prayer. I will tell you this. I've never seen an ambulance in a church until I came here. This is the second time. One time a guy had uh, sugar diabetes. He's passed away. He fell over on the floor, called the ambulance on. No, uh, Jerry. 
Jerry. Uh, no. Adgate, yeah. <clears throat> so I've never seen it ever before in a church in my life, and I've seen it twice here. On the upside, it wasn't while I was preaching, so I, I knew that they... I knew that they weren't dying of boredom or something, you know. <laughs> We're going to close in prayer. God, I ask that you would speak to our hearts, Lord. God, that you would speak to our hearts. God, that you would show us what you have for us today, Lord. And God, as you've been speaking to us in the last few weeks, Lord, that you would cause us to be readers of your word, Lord that we would be reading your word and seeking after you, Lord. God, I'm asking that you would continually reveal to us that you desire to be close to us and know your will. God, that we wouldn't live with guilt and regret. God, we wouldn't live in the glory years of the past. But God, that we would set aside all for you. <clears throat> God, I'm asking that you would help us to set aside every unclean way, every unclean activity, every unclean attitude and action and thought. God, that you would help us not to get caught in our own world. But God, that we would Revolve our life and our world around you. God, that you would give us plans and purposes, Lord. And as we seek you, God, speak to us on ministry that you would have us to do. God, that we would have a purpose and a goal in this life that goes beyond us into your kingdom. Guide us and direct us, Lord. I sincerely ask you to guide us and direct us according to your will and your purpose. Amen. Amen. Amen.